Well, welcome to another episode of Dad's Old Car. Before we start, Linda and I have got a car project and the front seat needed a repair, an upholstery repair, and so we got hold of Mr. Upholstery in Ojahu in Auckland. And uh, here's his contact details. Give him a call, he did a marvellous job, very well priced, and so if you've got an upholstery problem, I recommend you give him a call. Anyway, my mate Les Poa. Him and I go way back, so let's have a chat to Les. With me is Les Power, and Les and I go way back. You might remember the uh, ad we did where I took the crown canopy off the ute and stuck it in the water, put a little outboard motor on the back of it, and motored out. Les was standing on the beach watching me do it, and at the end of that little ad, Les laughed, and here's that laugh. <laughs> So Les, tell me about your first car. What did you have when you actually bought a car? Uh, I, I got a, a neighbour next door, I worked for Carter Hall, and he gave me a Vauxhall, really? a Vauxhall, yeah, handed, handed down by a good neighbour. And yeah, that was the first car I had that worked for Carter Hall. What, yeah. what sort of Vauxhall was it, do you remember? Uh, it was just a box. <laughs> no, well, there was, but there was, there was, but they had a, they put a straight pipe on it, oh, and you okay. make a <laughs> lot of noise uh, back then. Yeah. And then what happened after that? Um, I got that my brother gave me a, a Triumph Renown. A Triumph Renown. Renown. And then there was a Triumph Mayflower that sort of looked. Similar, Very similar. Had the uh, suicide doors. Yeah, and it was boxy square. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so right. the Renown was a bigger version of that. Yep. That's and a very flash English car. Yep. So if somebody turned up at my place in one of those, I would have thought the Queen was arriving. That, that's the <laughs> we. Funny you say that, Bill, because we used to go play rugby, and all the boys wanted to pile in the car with me when we went to rugby in in Maramaru back in those days, and we used to put a lot of people in the car back back in the day there with the suicide doors. Sometimes we used to uh, go around knocking down the uh, roadside. Oh, really? Yeah, back in the day, just being young, stupid. <laughs> young and stupid. Yeah. yeah, but you know, my, my brother gave the car to me because he didn't want to be caught there driving <laughs> that because he was in the army. Oh, yeah, oh, that's why I ended up with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. They would have had a, it would have had a, a, you know, like a rosewood or an oak dash. Yeah, it, it, it had a the wings on the on the the radiator cap. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. It it had that on there, and one day somebody flogged the the, the cap off it. So yeah, it took us a while to get the cap for the top. Have you ever turned up at somebody's place in this car and they wonder, has the king just arrived? God bless my auntie. Oh really? <laughs> I, I went back to Kaika, I went home to my, my hometown and I called in to see my auntie. I rocked up on the Triumph Renown <laughs> and I always remember my auntie's, her husband, Uncle Tom, telling her, Who's that in that flat, in that car? And she said, "Oh, close that door, close that door." And when I hopped out out of the car, she goes, "Oh, it's you, boy." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Oh, did you think I was the governor?" <laughs> so she he started calling me Tikawana, the governor. So most of my family started calling me Tikawana. That, that name to some of my cousins still call me Tikawana. So Liz, what did you get your license in, do you remember? Yeah, uh, I was 15 and uh, in Kaiko and I sat for my pr uh, prefect. Prefect? Yeah, my brother was Was prefect. that one with a flat bum or the one that looked like a Mark uh, just one Just a zipper. box, just, a, just yeah. a box, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there. We went there, I I passed and I had to actually, uh, my cousin drove me to Kawakara because we had to go all the way there to get my <laughs> license. Yeah, my cousin drove me over there and when I came back, I ran, I came, 
on the way back to coffee, he had the big smile. I was out the door with my my arm. <laughs> yeah, it's actually that, quite something when you get your license. Isn't oh, it? Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Bill. Yeah. Because you're a, a truck driver from way back, so you would have got your heavy heavy traffic sort of not well, three years after that. Yeah, not not not, not long after that actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually when I worked for Carter Holt, I just didn't want to be working in the mill, so I I went for my truck license yeah, yeah and, and never looked back haven't looked back great life on the road yeah. I know how you feel yeah excellent news yeah. have you ever had a car that's been special like one you didn't really want to sell or one that you know this is yeah it was my Mark 3 Zephyr the Mark 3 Zephyr yeah. of course yeah, <laughs> yeah. the Mark 3 Zephyr was my favourite yeah. excellent so what happened to that in the end um I think a friend of mine, we we did a swap <laughs> oh. We did a, a swap and I, um, I went for uh, Mark IV Zephyr. The, yeah, I went, went for one of those. Uh, back there, more children. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, good on you, Les. Thank you so much. Cheers, mate. And my old mate, Les. Yeah. Excellent been great catching up with you Billy good on you yeah we go back plenty of memories <laughs> so. well next up is Peter with his Fiat 124 with me is, is Peter and Peter welcome to Hi, our Bill. little show what Thank a you. beautiful Fiat you've got and when did you get this mate I've had this for over 30 years really um, did a restoration on it which took me forever <laughs> but um I guess there's always cost involved was one uh, that this had a a, um, a ground up restoration so the body was stripped and uh, and when you start doing that it's a massive job yeah, yeah. absolutely huge yeah. and, and these cars are are a big job body wise normally normally they have rust and this did have rust it probably was better than most but nevertheless it was a big job wow yeah and, and you enjoy it I mean what, why why have you got it um, I bought one of these when I was about 21 Oh yes. or 22, somewhere around there. I'm 57 now, going on 58 obviously. And um, back in the day, I drove one, I used to thrash the living daylights out of it, <laughs> and it just went like the clappers. And it always enthused me, just the, the, the performance and the, and the way it drove. And I, I was always like, I really just want to get one in, into this condition. So this, yes, is, yes. this is done roughly 20 years ago, a little bit over. Wow. And, and it's it, still, it, yeah, that paint's been over 20. ever since then? Ever since then. Oh, I, I've yeah. fluffed around with it, but yeah. ultimately the the body is all but original. The interior is pretty much original, bar the, obviously the the seat trimming. Yes. Um, but the mechanicals are are a it's a larger engine now, which to me it probably suits what we what we need. This was originally a 1600, and now it's a two liter, so it just uh, just toddles along a bit better. Do you belong to a club or anything? Uh, not so much in Auckland. There was a there was a fit club in Auckland, but it um, it uh, it finished. And they're just just not enough following, basically, oh, which right. is unfortunate. But there is a group of us that keep together, and we oh, okay. we yeah you know, we do do bits and pieces together. But unfortunately, not a lot of these have survived, and oh. and it's mostly because they just rusted away, sure. and uh, people just couldn't afford to fix them, and that was it. Who who does you know who designed us in Italy? Um, Pinaferino, I think, was was the one that designed it. Oh, right. um, but it's certainly got a lovely, a lovely it's got a lovely shape. shape. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, it is. So our program's called Dad's Old Car. Do you remember what your family car was when you were a kid? Well, I think we had Ford Falcons, XA Falcons, I think oh, is what okay. we had. Yeah, back in the day. So uh, yeah, <laughs> certainly no Fiat's. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't have been any good for the metal roads we were on. No. Wow. <laughs> the old Falcon was the go. <laughs> yeah. And what did you get your license in? Uh, what did I get my license in? Mark 5 Cortina? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. yeah, Mark 5 Cortina. Yeah, yeah, so I guess our family was a was a Ford, yeah, right. a Ford family, yeah, but yeah, but, uh, yeah they, they were all good cars in the day. And, and this is the car of interest? This is the car of interest, yeah, I guess as a young fellow, always was a bit of a loose unit, and of course these, <laughs> these probably fitted the so they can wheel spin and sort of... Oh, absolutely, it's yeah, rear wheel yeah. drive so you can do skids in it and uh, <laughs> it, 
actually it's uh, it's great fun on metal roads actually because <laughs> yeah it go, they go really actually for for their day they actually went very well in, in fact this has been on tv in an ad or something i was just being told yes right? this, this is uh when i say to someone i've got a fiat 124 they look at me and they don't know what it is and i just say to them look it's on the asb and they're like oh yeah okay i know which one it is so anyway yeah there's a there's a few different ones uh with this car on it. they normally just show a little bit of it might be the tail light or something oh, right, some yeah. small portion of it, and it probably gets people thinking what on earth was that thing but yeah. but yeah this car is on the asb ads so there yeah you go. there you yep. go folks watch All out right. for it <laughs> at the british and european car show on at pakaranga a few weeks ago there was a Lancia Aprilia, which I thought was an odd looking car, so let's have a look at that. This is a Lancia, and it's an Italian car. I can't tell you what year it is, because it, there's no registration sticker, so it's uh, yet to be done. And um, it's an interesting shape. It's, you've got to say it's odd. Just looking at the windscreen wipers, there's an arm that goes between them, so one arm drives the other one. Lovely headlights, nice grill, it's sort of got a interesting shape to it. I'm just trying to think what looks like that, a grill. But when you come down the side here, it's got uh, the doors that open this way, but the passenger door is actually suicide, which is really interesting. And if I come around the, the back here, it's got a boot, a little lever here that comes up. I don't know how many suitcases you get in that. It's got a very interesting little twin uh, windows at the back. And if I look in there, there's actually a, a little string, some strings, and there's a blind that goes up. So uh, you're having a bit of a snog in the back, you don't want people peering at you, you can just put the, put the blind up and they all go away. A centre, um, one, one light in the middle for the brake light, no indicators. So I'd have to put this at around 1950 something leather seats it's got little uh, rails along the, a little cord on the back to hang on to and um, simple little dashboard little gut blocks and uh, a spoke steering wheel so there you go little glass uh, weather vanes here to keep the water out of the out of the thing the uh, handles have got a little uh, hinge and they come around this way on the side here it's got the little arm that flicks up for the indicator. So you turn the little button on the steering wheel there, that pops out, tells people you're going to turn left or right. And I just think it's interesting. Most, most of the British cars have got them sort of sitting in the middle here, but no, Lancia have decided to stick it out the side. Nice running board along the side. It's actually quite snazzy, I've got to say. Different, but snazzy. And finally for this episode, we talked to Bill about two Hupmobiles. With me is, is Bill, and Bill, welcome to our little show again. And you might remember Bill, he was part of the uh, Te Arawa Twilight car show they had a, a couple of five weeks ago. And uh, he had the, uh, the, the uh, Graham Page along with Angela who told us all about it. But what Bill's got here is a Hupmobile, and this is Hupmobile number one. 1909. 1909, yeah, called the Model 20. The Model 20? Is that because they've done 20 of them? Or? No, I think it's because it's 20, it's supposed to be 20 horsepower. Oh, okay, 20 <laughs> horsepower, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a lot for, for, uh, for, for the time. time. Yeah. yeah, absolutely it is. Now, just a, a, as a quick glance, I mean, Hupmobile's on the, on the, on the step there, Hupmobile's across the uh, radiator, so they advertise their vehicle quite nicely. You know, these all aren't simple to make. No. And um, the first thing you notice is the amount of gold or brass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess the brass, 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 everything's, see, even the accelerator, brass. And so I wasn't there at the time, and, and nor were you, but I, you'd have to assume that there must have been plenty of brass about at the time. Yeah, and also uh, this is, at the point when they're going from um, horse drawn t to cars. Yes. When this vehicle came out, there was still one hell of a lot of horse drawn vehicles on the road. And, and the, things like these, the, the lights and all that, they came off carriages. Carriages, they're already so, making them. Yeah. 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 So, um, and uh, are these powered by, the, oh, I see there's a, an acetylene. Yep. 
thing here. The headlights are gas uh, acetylene powered, and the two side lights and the tail tail light are um, kerosene. It's just like a, a lamp you'd have in your house yep. at night. Just yep. open the little window, set a light. Yep. So how do you get a warrant for that? Now turn the lights on. You so you open up the little thing, put a match in, and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you can get a warrant for this, but it's what they call a daylight warrant. Oh, okay. So you can only drive it at daytime, which should be a wise thing to do, I think. Yes, with the lights these days on modern cars, poof, yeah, you know they come at you the wrong way. And, oh, turn your lights down. But I was talking to Roger Mann, who has a similar amount of of uh, age vehicles, and he was saying that the acetylene, the brightness of acetylene, was you know you'd be surprised how bright they are. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, uh, the 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 reason behind it is is the danger of it, especially ge uh, gas generators. Everything goes wrong, and you could get a build up of pressure, and then you get a little bit of an explosion or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> so when the horse people go and buy, would all go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your fan dangled machine. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a, a fuel tank at the back, which the fuel is, is just sort of gravitational to yep. the engine. And that engine is quite special. And it's, uh, there's lots of stationary engines. There's lots of other engines like in, um, in uh, the big steam you know, traction engines yep. that have what's commonly known as a total loss engine. Yep. And what total loss means, folks, is that the, the oil goes in and it gets chucked around the engine and then flicked out. So you've got a, a, an oil reservoir somewhere that keeps the oil flowing through the engine and you've got a fuel that keeps the engine going. But it's just that the total loss system, which is what they've come up with around about this period of cars and other machinery, it was, uh, was the way it was. Yes, it was, um, it was a while before they got round to uh, oil pumps and petrol pumps and all those sort of extra bits and pieces. Um, so this car of course has got no water pump, no oil pump, no petrol pump. <laughs> so it's all just gravity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the, the gravity, the oil goes in one side, flicks around the engine, out it goes. Yep, it goes out through the, the side where I think you'll see that um, it, the uh, valve train is all exposed. So the oil just drips out all the time. <laughs> and I see it's got a radiator. I, 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 Cars of the time sort of were subject to a lot of boiling. You know, if you go up a steep hill or something, mm. it's it's boiling. Um, with, you know, even in the 1950s, lots of cars going up hills like the Brindu and got to the top and had to pull over and yeah. wait till they cooled down before they continued on your merry way. Amazing. Yes, well, it's just uh, what they used to call a thermosiphon. So right. the water got hot and uh, um, came into the radiator and then cooled and dropped down to the bottom and came back through the engine. So uh, it, I had it worked, a, but not that well. I had a boat when I was long line in the 1970s, and uh, it had the engine, and then these two pipes came out of the engine, went to the bottom of the hole and went underneath the That's hole, right, yeah. out the back <laughs> and then back in the engine again. And so the whole you know, water system was going, being cooled by the salt water that's running underneath it, and then back into the system again. <laughs> But yes, it, uh, the thing with this um, car is it doesn't rate, generate heat like a modern car because it's, the compression is only 4.5 to 1, oh. which is why you can crank it to start it. You, know, you, get, uh, you can get up much higher pressure, it starts to get hard to turn over. Okay, yeah, the, and there were some big machines that had to be cranked. But they, you know, you sort of had to take decompress all the all the cylinders to, yeah. to get it going. Some yeah, they either did that, or they had they uh, had a what they called an inertia starter. So you had a crank handle, but it wound up a flywheel, which built up a f amount of uh, inertia, and then you'd kick it, and it would engage with the crankshaft. They did aeroplanes like that too. Yeah, I seem to did. remember. Yeah, yes, sort of crank, crank, right. crank, crank, push the button, the repeller starts, and hope yeah. it goes. Go, go, go. And if you're lucky, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So we saw a, uh, a Saxon the other day, a lovely little car, and this isn't much bigger than what that is, and I'm sure the, the seat's just about the same width, so yeah. two of me in there and you're probably you know, sort of both sort of leaning on each other. To yeah. <laughs> but at, at its time, you know, people in the 90, early 1900s weren't great big fat people, so they would have got in there just nicely. Well, to, and also uh, the thing 
that got people, I think, was the speed. Because a horse, you you know, you, in a carriage, you might be doing 15 miles an hour, something like that, top speed, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this thing is capable of doing 45 miles an hour. So leave the horse in the dust. Yeah. And that's the other thing about the roads of this yeah, time. You know, yeah. you're, you're going through the mud, you're going through dust, you're going through... It wouldn't mean too many uh, tar-sealed or concrete roads in, in, around at that time. No, no. they were, um, And that's why they had such high ground clearance too. <laughs> yes, but uh, I'm just looking at the size of these wheels. What, 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 how high are they? What, what width are they? Um, off the top of my head, I can't tell you. I'd have to have a look what it says on the side of the, um, the tyre. Tire. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how long have you had this? Um, we bought this in 2020, I think. I think that's right. And it was sitting on blocks in the shed in Christchurch, and we bought it up here, and we were working on it to get it going. And we got it going, and uh, took it for a few runs around the block, and then um, thought, right, we'd be going to take it for a warrant. So the next day I went into the shed, or went in here, started up, and it wouldn't start. Oh. And I found that I've got a shorting problem on the uh, magneto, so I'll get that sorted, and then we'll go and get a warrant and drive legally around the block. <laughs> Is that all you do with it, around the block, or maybe take it to the old Oh, show? we'll go further, we'll go to shows. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Summertime yeah. it's okay. I wouldn't be driving around in the winter, but no. you're a bit breezy. Well, that's right. You're not big on windscreens and all no. cover. You can get a windscreen and you can get a hood, oh, okay. but they're optional extras. You were telling me the lights are optional. They're an optional extra as well, yeah. Uh, so most people... Went to bed at night. I imagine so, yeah. I don't <laughs> think there's much. Well, you know, the roads are so terrible yeah, anyway. You have dinner and gone to bed, got to work yeah. hard the next day. And it's only two speed. You've got um, low and high. So it's this little gate business here? Yep. And it's this, um, they call it a slide, sliding gear gearbox so that you don't have problems with um, double clutching. You don't have to do that. Right. And if you want to go into reverse, you just push that sideways into that into that slot. And there in reverse. Oh, okay. and it's all very simple. So one, two, reverse. Yep. Yeah. That must be fun, and you a little wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a little bit. Uh, oh well, they only just get the hang of it, weren't they, cars? Yeah, exactly. And so we've certainly come a long way since this. But as I said, they had to start somewhere. And what intrigues me is the Europeans, Germans, the Italians, etc., etc., were making cars. Mm. Japanese were even making cars, but there, there were no communication. Was, was, you know, you had to write a letter yeah. and send it off. There were no phones, no faxes, no, no anything. But all these people have all had the same idea at the same time, and they're all building pretty much the same sort yeah. of machinery. And everybody's thinking, so it's like God. It's, you know, righto, it's time to build cars. There's the ideas. Yeah. Get on with it. I mean, it, yeah, it's um, things have changed a little bit over the years. Like this has got a wet clutch, whereas now virtually all car, well, that still have clutches, have a dry clutch. You know, that's right. They're going away from that now, of course, with all these new systems they have. <laughs> yeah, you say clutch to a teenager, and they've got no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just got my license. Oh, you can drive a clutch. I mean, a stick shift. Can you? What's a stick shift? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so no. I've never heard of three on the tree. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we had when I was a young fella. Yeah. You know. You've got another Hutmobile next door, which I think we should have a look at. Yep. And uh, congratulations, this is absolutely marvellous. Good on you. Thanks. <laughs> Bill, this is a, another Hutmobile, and we did see a Hutmobile at a, uh, at a do in Rangiora. Somebody had a one and they put a huge V8 in it. They really sort of souped it up. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a Hupmobile, probably about the, sort of the 30s Hupmobile. Oh, yeah. Pretty snazzy looking thing. But um, what year is this? This is 1923. 1923. The war's finished, everybody's gone back to work, we've all yep. got a little bit of money. And uh, would this be an expensive car or would this be a sort of the average mum and dad car? They're more of an upmarket car. They oh, weren't okay. up there like with your Rolls, Royce, Rolls Royces or um, Packards Marmonts or something. or something like that. No, but they're more upmarket than Ford or Chevy. Oh, okay. So Chevy and Ford were the family cars of the yep. time. Yeah. Mm. And in England it was the Austins and the, all those Morrisons. Morris and, and all those. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. What power is this? It's got a uh, 2.8 litre four-cylinder engine. Okay, 
And uh, we looked at the early one. Has this got a total loss system? Or no, they, they've, they've, got, uh, they've got quite advanced here. We've got, um, it still hasn't got a water pump. It's still thermosiphon. But we've got an oil pump. And we've got um, fuel directory is, ac- uh, dri- dri- is driven by vacuum. Oh, okay. So it's the, when you start the engine, you start a va- is a vacuum tank, pank, yep. and that sucks the petrol through into the tank, and the tank then grab feeds down to the, the, carburetor. To the carburetor. Yeah, wow. The, uh, the front on there has got a, a little heat. Is that a thermostat? Uh, it's a temperature gauge. Um, it actually doesn't go into the water. It's it, it's above the water, so it's the steam, um, and that goes up as the engine ha- warms up. Gives you an idea what's yeah, going on. Little red line there. Yeah. yeah, they're not very accurate. This thing most of the time tells you it's uh, overheating, but it's not actually overheating because oh, okay. I hop out the first few times and checked it, but it wasn't. So no, yeah. so you're not taking too much notice of that. No. after that. No, <laughs> it's got. Is it, is it hard to undo because you've got two levers there to sort no, of lean on? No, it's not. because it. it's not a it's not a pressure system. It's oh, okay. Uh, you know, so mm. they had to make it easy. Yeah, <laughs> I think also uh, aesthetics in it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just looking in the in the back seat. I mean, you can put mum, dad. And there's probably room for all the kids to sit on the floor in front of you. Yep. Yeah, and then you, you know, mum and dad driving the thing with a couple of kids in the front. So you certainly jam the the bodies in here. That's for sure. Oh yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kids could stand on the back seat. Yeah, yeah. Well, you when I was a young them, fella, yeah. I used to sit on the back seat of. Um, yeah. I think we had an Essex or something like that when I was a real young fella. Yeah. <laughs> And the Big lovely trouble. wide, you can stand on these running boards and just yep. hold on under here. Yeah. There's something to hang on to there and you'll fly off into the town or going to the next pub. Yeah, <laughs> or going to the bank and have a machine gun in the other hand. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at the, the controls and things in here. I see it's got a, a speedo, what I call a tape measure speedo. Yep. And then there's a, the mileage and this is where you went round the clock. I uh, see it's got four numbers, so we we'll go up to nine, 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 and then you're around the clock. Yep. So you don't know how many times this has been around the clock. No, I think it's been around the clock quite a few times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> been here since 1923. <laughs> and above that, there's a, a, a little light to see the speedo when you're travelling along at night. On the right hand side, there's an amp meter, and underneath that, there's a what's that? Oil, oil pressure. Oil pressure. Yep. yep. And that's it. Um, looking down at the floor, you've got a clutch, brake, accelerator between them, um, and, a, and a three-speed, four-speed gear stick. Three-speed. Three-speed. Three yep. And I think the Americans enjoyed the three-speed. Most of those American cars yeah. were just three-speed. And there's a little, little. Is that a what is that? Choke. That's the choke. Yep. Yeah. And on the steering column, you've got your advance and retard and the uh, adjustment for the So once, uh, you've got it, once you've got it started, then you just adjust those yep. so it's running nice, mm. and, then, and then off you go. Yep. Wow. Uh, Bill, I remember seeing photographs of, of what they called service cars, and service cars were usually Cadillacs, I think. Yep. But they were very similar to this, um, sort of open. They may have had three seats, but they were just had huge amounts of luggage sort of on the side, on the back, on the other side, and off they go to sort of Napier to Taupo, a hell of a road. Yeah. And along the way they'd sort of get stuck, everybody out and push. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Packards were used as, as service cars Oh, as well. are they? Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. Mm. But I've just seen these photographs of, you know, the, the car's stuck, they've got a rope on the front and all the passengers are all pulling on yeah. it, trying to get it free to, to carry on their journey whichever way they were going. Well, I mean, the thing was, good roads were gravel roads, the bad roads were clay. Clay, mm. and then when it rained a bit, they sort of got a bit stuck. Mm. Yeah. There's a, you've got a little rack over there, I, I see, that just sort of clamps onto the side that stops the luggage falling yes. off. That's mm. interesting. Ha <laughs> ha